I would just want to start with what Trump said today. I mean, he talked about environmental alarmists. I mean, how alarmed should we be that he is adopting such an attitude? Well, I, I think he said that, but he said as well another thing, that now American is a sufficient energy. And we are very proud and very, uh, that we have been contributing through our $35 billion investment in the country to help the America become self-sufficient in, in, in energy. So we have already invested uh, heavily in, uh, in renewables, as you know. We are one of the three largest wind producers in the United States. We have already invested heavily in transmission and distribution networks, which is already absolutely needed for integrating these energies into the system. And, uh, and we are already proud that that happened. So saying that, I think the, in the United States, the energy policy is depending more on the states. I think in, we are present in 23 states. Each of those states, they have their own renewable portfolio uh, targets. And I think they are already uh, generating uh, uh, auctions, and they are already just forcing the distribution companies to distribute a certain percentage of the electricity we have to come from renewable sources. And that is what is already happening. But so it is important what the leaders say, and Trump isn't alone. If you take a look at Australia, we have Prime Minister Morrison not supporting renewables. I mean, you do business in Australia. How concerned should we be? Well, I, 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 I think... We as a company, we have already a fine commitment to try to give, to live already a better world to our children, the future generation. In all sense, in the sense of uh, uh, climate change, sustainability, in the sense to have already society more equal, in the sense to already to gender equality, what we are already the leaders on that one, to try to make already our company more transparent, with better corporate governance, to apply better all the ethic principles. And I think in Australia, we are trying to help as well. We are investing in Australia. We are making new uh, power plants, wind and, and solar, as we did in the United States. And I think it's, if very many people like ourselves do so, I think we are solving the thing independently what is the biggest speeches that people can already make. I think each of the uh, 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 leaders, company leaders, we have to do our best for already delivering a better thing for the future generation. Are we on, this, on the cusp of a mindset change? Are we on the cusp of making renewables the norm? I think today renewables is not renewables against no renewables. Today renewables is economically more efficient than fossil fuels. It's cleaner and more competitive is are generating an industry, jobs, huge technology, and, and all those things are positive. I think renewable is not only the point of how you produce electricity, which you produce in a more efficient manner, in a cleaner manner, but at the same time you are generating wealth around, which I think that, that is what you have to contemplate, not only looking what part of the equation. I think it's not that's good, that's bad. I think that's better. And I think we have to move toward to better world in all sense. And that can generate a better world, more sustainable. And, and that is what we are doing. Uh, you're investing big. If you take a look at your investments in Australia alone, you've pumped in about $500 million in both wind and solar farms. I mean, what kind of potential, what kind of growth? And after Australia, where do you go? Well, I think that's peanuts. In the state we invest, we have invested $35 billion. Now in the United States, we are investing in the range of four to five billion dollars a year. So, which I think that is already a new line that we are already making. We are very pleased to do so. It's already the social demand is there. And I think that's why we are coming. And we would like to contribute, as we are already contributing to the United States to being self-sufficient, with more clean energies, with the better, better networks, to do the same thing in Australia as well. So, you're saying that more, we can expect more investments into Australia? Of course, we are not coming for making 500 million. Give the, us a our, sense of our, what our, you're winning. Our, our unit is billions. <laughs> 500 million is, is not much for us. How soon and how much more? Give us a sense so, of your commitment to the Australian market. Look, in the last, in the last uh, 50 years, we've already invested more than $100 billion in, the, in this thing. We, this year, our plan our, uh, uh, for this year is investing $10 billion, 10 billion euros, which is $11 billion. And I think the range of investment of our companies in this range, 10, 12 billion dollars a year. So I think that's why I think we are ready to invest as much as necessary if the terms, conditions, profitability, environment, et cetera, et cetera, 
uh, network stability, uh, 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 re uh, regulatory stability is there. So I think we are ready to do so as well. How about your plans in Europe? I mean, you've built a solar plant, which is believed to be the largest in Europe. Yeah. When do you expect it to be fully commercialized? No. It's already fully operational in this moment. How important is it? I mean... So I think, I think that is already over 500 megawatts installed power. It's already 1,200 hectares of land where it's already just generating. And uh, has been already 1,700 people has been already working the installation. So, but that is one. I think next uh, next week, I think the prime, the first minister of Portugal, the prime minister of Portugal, is going to visit another pumping storage facility we are building in Portugal, which is already around two billion dollars investment, which is three dams, which is pumping storage, which is moving the water for a solve the excess of electricity. When the sun is shining, or the wind is blowing, and there's not enough demand, we take this one and we pump the water up. And when it's needed, that come down. I think there is already. It, it, we are many, many of those projects in this moment worldwide. How, how about the solar market? We know that um, Europe's solar market is moving away from subsidies. Will that impact how business is done and plans going forward? Well, I, I, I think for years I, I, we are more than 20 years already now investing in renewables. When we are starting investing on that one, the most competitive technology was onshore wind. And uh, I was already criticizing the investment in, uh, in solar because it was too expensive. It was five times more expensive than wind. Now, are, depending on the areas, solar is more competitive than wind. Another area, solar, wind is more competitive than solar. Both are already on the same place. So, and I think in most places, they don't require any kind of subsidy because Solar, if the sun is shining, is as competitive as another, another uh, technology. That's why we are investing heavily in solar as well in this moment, in Mexico, in Brazil, in Europe, the United States, everywhere. Before we let you go, I have to ask your view on the biggest risk you see for the business. So I think this question has been passed to me already by my board when they was approved the budget for 2020. Uh, what is the biggest risk? And the bigger risk was execution. When you already plan, now I think the traditional business was based in few very large power plants. Now we are very many small power plants worldwide. And the risk of delivering in time and in cost, so many power plants, probably in this moment we have 50, 60 power plants in construction, not of 1,000 megawatts each, but 50 megawatts each. It's not the same thing than to make five or thousand than 50 or, uh, or 50 or 100. So, and that makes much more complication, delivery. But fortunately, we have already a team so well trained. We have already demonstrated their capabilities, their skills in delivery with a promise that even is a risk and very relaxed that they are going to deliver what they expected. So execution is one issue, but how about the sluggish growth we're seeing in Europe? I mean, how do you perceive that? And how is that impacting your in well, your investments going forward? Well, I, I, I think Europe has already three main uh, uh, lines, the new government of the European Union, or European Commission. Energy transition, Green Deal, digitalization, and immigration. And in Green Deal, they are appointed by President, which is very capable, Timmerman, who has already very clear idea, very brilliant. In countries like Spain, they are already appointed, yes, by president as well, which is taken on that one, which that shows the level of seriousness the government would like to, to address this point. And they are already fixing certain targets and already providing tools for making that happen. So the other day, the president of the European Commission was saying that Europe needs seven trillion euros investment in the next years for transforming our economy in a more sustainable economy. That is good news, because that is not only good news for those who are generating electricity. It's good news for those which are already producing the equipment. It's good news for the job creation. It's good news for taxation. It's good news for people in general, because that can help Europe to lead already in something as important as is our planet.